on uh, what is actually realistic. Well, amongst the various participants in the donors' conference, which was organised by President uh, von der Leyen and a number of uh, co-chairs, there were many American players there. So you have to remember that as part of all of this effort, there are certain personalities and donors and organizations getting involved from different continents, not just from Europe. So that's a very important point. And as she pointed out herself, we hope that uh, the American administration will come on board. But uh, could you just cut... Uh, the speaker, thank you. But whatever the case may be, we can't take a decision on our strategy on the basis of any possible limitations uh, coming from international players somewhere. I think there is a shared desire to move forward on uh, the basis of a, a cooperative procedure the Commission has managed to bring together 40 countries and uh, organizations at an international level in the course of this conference. So I think it is realistic to continue working on the basis of this cooperative approach, although, of course, this is optional. And there might be, of course, some players who don't want to come on board. On the issue of uh, subsidies for Sanofi, you know that we have European programs and uh, Sanofi can get involved in the field of research, for example. Now, we don't have the information with us here and now to tell you whether or not they have benefited from any research funding, but this is something that uh, we could certainly come back to. Uh, we can get back to you on that. Yes, I just wanted uh, to stress the importance of vaccines. So this is an issue which, uh, the, uh, which Commissioner Kyriakidis uh, is uh, very interested in. Uh, she's been talking to uh, health ministers about this. There are regular meetings with health ministers, and the idea is to have uh, good coordination and she has also suggested uh, the coordination of a Europe-wide uh, immunisation programme. So the whole question of vaccination is, of course, uh, at the very heart of the whole discussion when it comes to our uh, response on health issues. And then as for your question, Derek, you were asking whether we would have any measures which would grant preferences to Europeans over anyone else in the field of vaccines. Well, the underlying logic of the Commission's um, procedure is to avoid having this uh, Sophie's Choice situation. We want to ensure that we can make available to everybody who needs them in Europe and elsewhere, so we could make available the vaccine which could protect people against COVID-19. So there you have it. On this specific uh, topic, I see hands raised. Is it still on uh, the vaccine? Okay, we will try. Katagina, is it on this? Oui, bonjour. Bonjour. Um, no, no, c'est pas sur. It's not on this. It's on the masks that have been sent by the Commission. It's for Stefan, I think. Now, the Polish Minister for Health uh, contested the mask sent by the Commission, saying that they didn't uh, comply with the European standard for FFP. He says they are not utilizable. And what I'm wondering is there are other countries, because he said there are 17 countries that uh, uh, 1.5 million masks, I think, have been sent to. Are there any other countries experiencing problems with these masks? 
I understand that you had conformity tests that you intended to carry out, conformity tests. Have they been carried out? Why only do you conduct these tests after sending the masks out? Thank you for your question. Well, of course, it's of utmost importance that personal protective equipment uh, sent out by the Commission is of very high quality. That's uh, fundamental because this equipment is used by citizens and by professionals in the health sector. Now, we did uh, receive, we've taken note of comments made by the Polish authorities. To date, only one member state has identified similar problems. That was the Netherlands. Commissioner Kirekides has requested her services to alert all member states, plus the United Kingdom, all member states who received a material or a portion of those 1.5 million masks. And she's requested that uh, her services be kept up to date on the quality of the masks. When it comes to quality control, I can tell you that the Commission has scrupulously followed all control measures, verifying that these masks were usable, doing all due diligence necessary with the provider. These controls did take place, the checks did take place. Once the masks are sent out, of course, the quality needs to be checked too. That's what Polish authorities did, amongst other authorities too. And what's important to note as well is that we have decided to suspend future deliveries of these masks, one that, ones that were meant to be sent out. But we will follow up on this issue and we'll see what action needs to be taken if there is indeed a problem with the quality of these masks. Thank you. Yes, I have a follow-up question. So what will happen with the masks that were sent to Poland? Can they be used or not? Do they need to be destroyed? How much will that all cost? What are the next steps? Will the Commission be uh, reimbursed? Will they take up contact with Chinese authorities? Because I understand these are Chi masks coming from China. And what's the problem? Where does the nonconformity lie? Well, we're currently taking a look at this question in closer detail. The quality of masks is of utmost importance for us. That's why we've asked member states to keep us up to date uh, on the results of their analysis of these masks. And that will allow us to know exactly what next steps we should take uh, within the context of delivering and providing these masks. But we're currently checking everything. And if necessary, we will, of course, take any necessary legal action. So, will these masks be destroyed now? How much will that cost? Well, I believe these masks have been delivered to uh, Poland by now, so I assume that Polish authorities uh, will have to see and you'll have to check with them what they intend to do with the masks. Of course, we would like to be kept informed on what happens in each of the member states. Merci. Je passe la parole maintenant à Quentin. Now I'd like to give the floor to Quentin. I think he had a question on Sanofi as well. Vas-y, Quentin. Go ahead. Good afternoon. It took her some time to get connected. Apologies. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, I wanted to go back to this whole question of uh, Sanofi. Uh, the number two of uh, Sanofi said to the French press today that the EU is lagging behind when it comes to vaccines, access to raw materials as well, to containers and syringes, and he wants uh, Europe to get organized, otherwise the Europeans uh, will be moving ahead. Can you confirm that 
the EU is lagging behind other parts of the world when it comes to uh, developing a vaccine. And it's not the first time that the American authorities have tried to develop vaccines before the rest of the world and uh, keep this for Americans first. So corporations, uh, f cooperation with the U.S. at an international level, is this working or not? Thank you very much. Well, I can confirm that research and production is an absolute priority for the Commission. As I said, Commissioner Kiriakidis attaches a great deal of importance to the whole question of vaccines. So vaccine research is uh, something which has been uh, discussed in meetings with member states. We have to follow the right approach, and it's at the very heart of all the work we're doing. So rest assured, we are continuing to uh, work on this with the member states. Well, Quentin, I think we've already answered your second question when uh, we answered uh, Derek's question. When we talk about cooperation with the United States, you have to see what we're talking about. We cooperate with some very significant American players in uh, the context of uh, our global response. And we are leaving the door open to the American administration for them to come on board. Now I would like to give the floor to 